Zal Batmanglic. You co-created A Murder at the End of the World with Britt Marling. Um, it's a murder mystery set uh, at an isolated retreat. Uh, what was the initial germ of an idea that led the two of you to come up with this particular story? Um, Britt tells it really well, which is, you know, the old um, uh, Agatha Christie murder mystery, the seat of power was the English manor house. But, uh, you know, we don't think that's today's seat of power. And we thought that the tech billionaires retreat was a was a, a new place where you could invite interesting, uh, suspicious, complicated people to gather and uh, all ask who done it. You know, um, we'd read somewhere a few years ago, I guess four or five years ago, that the whodunit rose in popularity between the two wars, you know, after World War I and in the lead up to World War II, because maybe people were looking around and wondering who done it. And we felt that um, there was a similar mood in the air in 2019 when we started working on this story, um, that we were all looking to each other, trying to figure out how did we get here to this sort of global I don't know, mess. <laughs> and so we wanted to tell a story that could sort of be, uh, you know, a murder mystery, but also wrestle with some of those ideas. Uh, and you've had this uh, creative partnership with Britt Marling for many years now. Uh, how, you know, now that it, you're like a, more than a decade into working together, um, like how is that collaboration like? Do you have, you know, do you kind of finish each other's sentences? I've heard people say that we finish each other's sentences. I, it, I think that we always um, put the story first. The story is our monarch. And so we um, let the story lead. And so our partnership works quite well because, you know, we, we try to not bring our own egos into it and try to let the story lead the way. Um, and, you know, leading this uh, story is the character of Darby Hart played by Emma Corrin. Um, uh, you know, she's an amateur detective. She wrote a true crime book. Um, what, what was the inspiration for, for this character? Well, we wanted to tell a murder mystery, um, not from, you know, not from the perspective of a classic detective. We wanted to tell a murder mystery from the perspective of a young woman. And, um, you know, because usually young women are the, um, are the victims in these stories. And we wanted to sort of evolve that idea that you don't need to have a woman in her 20s be you know, half naked and dead to start a murder mystery. You can have someone else um, be in that position and the young woman can be the person to solve the, the story. And um, what's exciting about writing Darby Hart is that with Gen Z for the first time, you can have a young woman who's credible as a detective because um, she's put in the 10,000 hours, Malcolm Gladwell's classic 10,000 hours of hard work. She just started at 13, you know, working on her father's um, crime scenes because he was the coroner um, in their small town of uh, Lost Nation, Iowa. So it's, you know, it's, uh, um, it's exciting with Gen Z because they've put in so many hours already before they're even 25. So uh, now, uh, when you're creating a mystery uh, like this, uh, a whodunit, um, do you do you go in already knowing where you want the story to end up, or are you kind of discovering it along the way? Does things change along the way? Obviously, not to give away what, yeah, you know, where this one goes. Um, that's a really good question. I think we had a general idea of, you know, who we thought done it in the world. But it evolved as we were telling the story because we were really sort of investigating all the different options of the people we gathered. And then a sort of story just emerged. It, it, it just sort of came to us really naturally. So it was, it was cool. Um, and, you know, you're exploring themes of, as you said, like the world, you know, is, is in, you know, tumult, uh, you got, you know, climate change, for instance, is is a theme that that uh, resonates in this series. Uh, you know, what uh, made you want to explore uh, so, sort of those ideas? I mean, I just think it's really hard to be in the world and read about and now experience so much. You know, since we were kids, uh, Daniel, 
we've been hearing that the climate is in crisis. And, you know, in the last 10 years, I think you feel it so much. And just, you know, I think at some point when we were writing this story, um, we had to, I had to leave LA because my partner has asthma and the wildfires were so bad, we couldn't even be in town. So when you're starting to leave your home because of the devastating effects of climate crisis, it's like, how can you not sort of address that in your story? I, I come the other way. I think it's strange that st more stories don't deal with the things that we're all faced with. Um, I'm surprised when a story doesn't deal. Like, how can we ever tell any story moving forward that doesn't deal with the, the climate crisis? In, even if it's very much in the background of the story, I think that every modern story is is um, is affected by it. Um, and, you know, technology is sort of uh, the same, uh, you know, this uh, story uh, incorporates technology, you know, Darby is a hacker and, uh, you know, there are characters who embrace technology, characters who are critical of it. Um, like, what, what, what are your, you know, sort of ideas about technology and, you know, did, did they kind of filter their way into this story or did the story influence the way you look at it? I think the best moment that deals with technology happens in chapter five, which Britt wrote and directed. And she wrote this amazing scene of Bill and Darby in the past. And I won't give away what the scene is, but um, I think it encapsulated our feelings of technology, uh, you know, the most succinctly, which is that in so many ways, it's amazing. Darby is an outsider and an outcast. And I don't think she feels comfortable in Lost Nation, Iowa. I don't think she feels comfortable in our high school. And through the power of the internet, she meets Bill and they share common interests, but then they also get to meet IRL um, and really form a connection. So I think that the internet is um, brings them together. But then also Darby is just someone who's always, you know, on her phone and she can't get past that screen, whether it's her computer or her phone. And the story is an invitation for Darby to sort of like, it's two invitations, one in the past and one in the present and to get out from behind the screen metaphorically. Even when she, in the past, she physically gets out from behind the screen, um, the screen is still inside of her. And so I think at the end of the story, she has to sort of get rid of that buffer between the world. Um, and, you know, you, you do get to explore this character, uh, you know, in the past and in, in the present. Uh, what, what made you decide on, on that structure for uh, exploring uh, Darby and, and her mysteries? I think it's interesting. I'd heard about a friend of mine who went on a technology retreat and, you know, we go to different events and these events are in these sort of clinical spaces, even when they're cozy. And there are people coming from all different walks of life, but you bring your past with you. And so we thought that, you know, Darby is one of nine guests, but she's also bringing her history. And if we're going to see this story from Darby's perspective, then we have to also know her history and know the most important story that exists inside of her. And we also thought that, you know, people become detectives or all of us are detectives for our own lives and want to solve our own mysteries. And so we thought for Darby to really transcend and solve this case in the present, she needs to solve the mystery in her heart, the mystery of her past. And so that was our invitation to each other, to me, me and Britt, to sort of be able to fuse those things together and tell a story like that. Well, uh, I want to congratulate you on uh, this series. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, other people seeing it and talking about it. Uh, it's uh, uh, great talking with you about it. Thank you so much, Daniel.